Today we are making vegan meatball subs and we're gonna whip up some meatballs from scratch with lentils, a quick and easy red sauce, and both of these are just absolutely loaded with a ton of robust flavor, so let's get it going. And I got the inspiration for this recipe from Bon Appetit. We're gonna start off with three pieces of white bread and we're gonna cut the crust off like we're making a PB&J for a five-year-old. And then next, let's get a quarter cup of unsweetened plant milk and just give those slices a quick dunk. And then we're gonna gently squeeze out as much liquid as we can. And then we just need to cube those up and these are just gonna help with binding the meatballs amongst other things. So just go ahead and set those aside. And now we need to just lightly saute one shallot that's been finely diced in a bit of olive oil and then just until it gets a little translucent and a bit of color. And then we're gonna add in four cloves of minced garlic and just toast those for a minute as well. And once those are done, remove them from the heat and reserve. And then to a decent sized mixing bowl, we're gonna add in two cups of cooked lentils. You can cook yours or take a shortcut like me and get some that are already steamed. And then we're gonna throw in the shallot and the garlic, a quarter cup of chopped fresh Italian parsley, two tablespoons of fresh chopped basil, four to five tablespoons of aquafaba, which is the liquid included with a can of chickpeas in case you don't know. It's great as a binder instead of an egg. And then we're gonna do one teaspoon of this beefless broth concentrate, but you can do veggie broth too. Two tablespoons of mushroom seasoning, and of course, two tablespoons of nutritional yeast as well. And then one tablespoon of Italian seasoning, or you can just use some oregano and whatnot. One teaspoon of smoked paprika, one heaping teaspoon of Calabrian chilies for some heat. Leave that out if you don't like spicy meatballs. And then three tablespoons of olive oil, three quarters cups of breadcrumbs, a quarter cup of unsweetened plant milk, black pepper and salt, and then mix that up with your hands. And then remember, you forgot to add in the bread cubes from before. So go ahead and add those and then mix it up again. And now you could totally cook these as is, and I did that on my first test, and they were fine, but they were kind of mushy, as you can see here. So what I did instead was based off of some calculations from my friend Lacey at Avocados and Ales, I added in 60 grams of vital wheat gluten. And this is gonna give the meatballs some more structure and bounce. So just get in there and mix that up. And if the mixture feels too dry or crumbly, just add in a little bit more plant milk until it sticks together. And then you should have one giant meatball weighing around 750 grams and let that rest for about 10 minutes or so. Next, scoop out about one ounce or 30 grams for each meatball. I like to use this scooper, it's very handy. And then just roll out your balls and let them hang out on a parchment lined baking sheet. You should end up with about 24 meatballs. And once all those balls are rolled, add them to a skillet over medium heat with a tablespoon or two of olive oil. And we're just gonna toss them around and we're gonna let these brown on at least two sides. It should take about eight to 10 minutes. And once our balls are brown, we're gonna add in about a quarter cup of water, cover and lower the heat and let those steam for about 10 to 15 minutes, add more water as needed, and then we're gonna to toss them back on that baking sheet and bake them in an oven preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius for 15 to 20 minutes. To test the doneness, just take one and give it a little squeeze. It should be firm but soft and have a bit of a bounce to it. And now these meatballs aren't super dense like Impossible or Beyond, but they definitely hold up inside a sandwich and they are super dang good and bursting with flavor, so it works out. Now for the red sauce, we're gonna throw together something that's as easy as it is delicious. To a saucepan over medium heat, let's add two tablespoons of olive oil and then four to five cloves of minced garlic. Stir that and saute for about 30 seconds. Then add in one tablespoon of Italian seasoning. Stir that around for about 30 seconds. And then next we're gonna add in one 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. I like a chunky sauce, so I go for the crushed over the pureed, and I'm gonna add in two teaspoons of the Calabrian chilies. Again, if you don't like spicy, leave it out. And then one teaspoon of onion powder, one tablespoon of mushroom powder, a tablespoon of nutritional yeast. Stir that around, and then let's do one tablespoon of sugar, salt to taste, of course, and that's basically it. You can serve this right away, or ideally, simmer it for an hour or so. In fact, I would suggest letting this simmer while you make the meatballs. Speaking of meatballs, let's add them into the sauce and let them cook for a few minutes while we prep our sandwich. And I found these rolls by a local bakery and they are by far the best I've found for this kind of sandwich. The inside is soft and the outside has a nice chew to it. So try to find something similar. And I'm gonna slice it in half but leave a hinge and then I'm gonna hollow out just the top part of the roll. I tried toasting the bread, but I found that I preferred it untoasted, but for this toasted one, I just added some sauce to it, and then our meatballs, of course, and some shredded vegan cheese by Dea. I tried to tent it with some foil and bake it in the oven, but this cheese just did not want to melt the way I would have liked. Don't get me wrong, I wrapped this baby up and I ate it with abandon and loved every bite, but visually, I wanted to see if we could do better. 
So for the next one, I didn't toast the bread and I used some Follow Your Heart mozzarella and I tried out the microwave, which is something a few of you have told me you do. And I honestly, I was quite dubious, but I was also pleasantly surprised by how that turned out. In fact, it kind of steamed the bread too, which worked out great as well. So wrap that one up too, and I highly suggest wrapping it even if you're not a sandwich artist like me and wrap it with the grace of a billy goat. When you wrap the sandwich, it gets compressed and everything stays together and you won't lose your poor meatball when somebody sneezes. But for reals, this sandwich was absolutely fantastic. For my thumbnail model here, I did my old style as simply making a cheese sauce. I'll leave instructions for that in the blog post. But like I said, the meatballs are different from Impossible and Beyond, but they are equally tasty in my opinion. And even my non-vegan neighbor loved them. They are just so dang flavorful and hearty. And as with most my recipes, there should be leftovers so you can make some spaghetti and meatballs if you like, or just snack on a random meatball throughout the day like I've been doing. Either way, I really hope you all make this, and if you want to make some Swedish meatballs, check out this video right here, and until then, I'll see you all next time.